Welcome to Gold Derby. I am senior editor Marcus James Dixon, and we are here with Heidi Gardner from Saturday Night Live. Heidi, you just wrapped up your sixth season on SNL, and I'm curious, what is something you know now that you wish you would have known six years ago when you started? Oh my gosh. Um, that having fun is actually the best thing you can do. I mean, it's always fun, but... Uh... You know, it, it it feels like the stakes are high when you when you start, and uh, you know it's okay to break. That's even better. <laughs> People love that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just realizing that I'm only gonna have this you know really special experience one time in my life, and just have the best time with the most fun people ever. Mm -hmm. Every time something happens in the world, usually when it comes to politics, I find myself thinking, I can't wait to watch SNL this weekend. And I have to imagine, do, do you often think the same thing when something big happens? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always just like, what are we going to do? And who's going to play who? And, you know, like, it is fun, like being on the inside. And then, you know, there's those crazy times where, like, multiple things happen in the week that are huge. Like, I can't remember what season it was, but there was something at the beginning of the week that was crazy, like that was definitely going to be the cold open. And then on Friday, Trump got COVID and it was like, oh, no, that's going to be the cold open. Like whatever that other really exciting piece of news was just like was too late. Yeah. Right. Uh, it may have been the debate that was started that week, if I remember. Probably. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, what what is the vibe on set like when when a host comes in for the week that is a returning SNL vet, like a Molly Shannon or Steve Martin, Martin Short, and how does that compare to the energy of like a brand new first time host? Well, the thing that's cool about an alumni that I always say, and I saw this like the most, uh, I think the first alumni that hosted when I was there was Will Ferrell or Adam Sandler. But, you know, every week, you know, you want to score, you want to get something on the air, you want to write something that you were a star of. But when an alumni host that everyone is collectively a fan of, like everyone writes so selflessly, you're just like wanting to write in their voice and see them do their thing. And hopefully it like could be like you're like, oh, I know how to write for Will Ferrell or something. Um, so I always feel like that's a really selfless week where you're just like you guys are back here you're the star of the show do it um when there's a host that has never hosted before there's definitely a collective like i want um we want you to feel as comfortable at ease as nerves free as possible even though we know that your job is the hardest this week you're going to be in every single sketch and you have to do the monologue but i've actually found that to be one of my gifts i mean hopefully someone would would say that a host um is i want to do when i sense that energy that there might be a little bit of a nervousness i'm like oh what can i do for this host to like put them at ease just a little more you know and that that feels really good to be a team player like that uh travis kelsey was one of the standouts this year as as new hosts what was he like backstage i know you're a big kansas city fan and you're from kansas city yes um what he was like backstage, it was so cool because, um, I mean, I was so excited being a Chiefs fan. My whole, all my family and all my friends came. I was like, this could only happen once. A Kansas City Chief is hosting SNL. This is huge. I had a huge tailgate in my dressing room. But what was neat and what I love about whenever uh, athlete hosts is I watch them treat the week a little bit like a game. You know, like when he was getting adjustments on Saturday and dress rehearsals that are like, Travis, look at these cards. And then you switch to these when you're talking to Bowen, you know, like I was watching it and I was like, that's, I mean, even for a cast member, it's a lot to like switch cards. You know, I'm like, that's a lot to remember, you know, and I started just because I wanted him to do so well. You know, I was a little worried, like, oh, will he remember? And then I was like, no, he's an athlete. He gets adjustments all game long. He's going to nail this, which he did. And then the other cool thing was earlier on in the week, I was asking him, like, what do you eat game day? I'm like, I love sports. I want to know what fuels you. And he was like, man, you wouldn't believe it. But like before the game, I'm eating Uncrustables. And during the game, I'm eating Uncrustables. So I made sure on Saturday uh, to deliver him like three boxes of Uncrustables. And during the dress rehearsal, he was like, I've been eating those all day. They're keeping me going. So I was mm -hmm. like, this really is like you're playing a Chiefs game. 
Well, now I want to know what do you eat on SNL days? Okay, so I've kind of, I've had six years now to like figure it out. My first season, when I was just like new to everything and you're just getting pulled around and you are only, I was only at the whims of the SNL schedule. I couldn't figure out how to have a life outside of it. I was purely only eating gummy candy, I think. And also <laughs> PB and J's. I like really reverted back to a young part of myself. And then I was like, I don't feel great when I just eat gummy candy. So um, I, I actually do like a, you know, I tried to do a season where I cooked and, you know, I would like make a curry on a Sunday and kind of have that take me through to the week. But, but by Saturday, I was like, I don't have food anymore. Um, so I, I order like a meal delivery that the food is great. And so it's usually some sort of like, salmon and like a carb like I like a really good fat and a carb and I feel like that takes me through dress rehearsal and the live show and then at the after party there's also food so it's like then it's a lot of chips and salsa sometimes it's a steak at four in the morning <laughs> yeah uh, one of your standout moments this season was the Abby the ex-girlfriend sketch you played a woman who was clearly still in love with her ex, who was Travis Kelsey, and your character, you know, lots of crying, lots of puddles of, of water. Can you talk about the special effects that were used in that scene? Yeah, so it was really funny. It um, So they had these like little tubes. We had to like perfectly make a wig where I had these like curtain bangs where you sh couldn't see these tubes that were right next to my eyes where water would shoot out. And then, um, you know, that was when... When they put, before they put the wig on, the way I was rigged up with the bald cap and like these tubes, and there was like a tube running down my back. I was like, ooh, I look like I'm an alien or species or something. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Um, but then that tube ran all the way like down my leg. Um, it kind of looked like I had a catheter um, going out to do a sketch, but I was connected to this water tank. And then our special effects guy was, controlling the water which was very fun because i didn't know at any point how much uh would be coming out and he surprised me quite a bit <laughs> well i love that that one went viral with uh, with all of the because at the end of the sketch you're it's revealed that you're dating travis's brother which was a funny little twist yeah that was fun <laughs> Uh, another one that I loved this season was you popped up on Weekend Update as the coworker who's extremely busy doing seemingly nothing. And that one had a lot of phys physical humor with the laptop and the there's the cell phone and the salad was going everywhere. Uh, how yeah. fun was that character? I mean, I equate it to, uh, and I know this is corny, but I felt like I was flying. <laughs> it was the closest I think I'll ever come to just to flying. It was so fast paced, which was scary, you know, just in this way of like, is this energy going to be okay? But once it was going and I felt like the crowd was on my side and I felt Colin was with me, I just, I never stopped. And I really, I was so grateful um, to the writers, Kira Sullivan and uh, Allison Gates for, for just writing something that, you know, they saw that I could do that and I could play that energy. And yeah, I had the time of my life doing that. Did your eyes hurt? Cause you were crossing your eyes a lot in that. I know sometimes I watch things back where I cross my eyes and I feel grateful that they didn't stay crossed because <laughs> I mean, I know that's an old wives tale, but um, I don't, I didn't know I was doing it to the extent I was in that sketch until I watched it back. Um, I was in the Groundlings in LA um, a while ago and I did a sketch uh, where that happened. And I actually, I burst a blood vessel. So things can happen. Oh my gosh. Yeah. One um, Another one of your beloved recurring characters is Angel, every boxer's girlfriend from every movie about boxing ever. And she returned this year and she met up with the one and only Adonis Creed played by Michael B. Jordan. Uh, can you tell us how that all came about? Well, I just definitely, when I saw he was hosting, I was like, I haven't done Angel in a few years. And um, I was just like, oh, I, I, I can't miss this opportunity. I, I have to try to get her out there with Creed. And, um, and yeah, I made it like a little, at the end, you know, her and Creed <laughs> end up together. And 
it's it's so funny because you know you write something as comedy it is fully comedy but i've lived with that character for long enough now that then when i watched it back and i realized like oh she's with creed and like at the end of the sketch me and michael just embraced and like it was such a big smile and i I really do just feel like I gave her like a really, I don't know if it's an ending, but right now a happy ending. <laughs> and that made me really happy. Uh, on, a, on a more sad note, Cecily Strong left in December and the entire yeah. cast came out and sang Blue Christmas to her with Austin Butler. How hard was that moment? Everyone was tearing up. The audience certainly was tearing up. Yeah, I mean, it was such a perfect goodbye for Cecily. Like it was su such a magical, like, whimsical moment for Cecily and, and such a, you know, I don't think Austin Butler was going to do anything with Elvis during the show or play Elvis, you know, um, and the fact that he and Lauren wanted to honor her in that way. And also it was like, for me, I was like, this is the closest I'm ever going to get to Elvis. He sounds exactly like him. This is so cool and like rare. And it felt, and Cecily is rare. She is this, like, I always say, I was always a fan of Cecily's before I got to the show. And the fact that everyone can see what she did on the show and like how immensely talented she is and that there's nothing actually she can't do. But then the fact I got to see all of the other stuff at Table Read that didn't make it, whether it was her sketches or just other people's, but what she brought to it, um, that whole goodbye just felt like one of a kind, which I think she completely is. So it just, it was perfect. And how do cast members know when it's the time to go? We saw a few people leave last summer. Uh, Cecily left in December. How, how do you know when it's the time? Gosh, um, you know, I think there. I think it's so personal to the person, and I think you go through so many emotions at SNL that there's definitely times where even your ego could probably be like, "I'm out of here," or like this or that, but. You know, I always remind myself, like, this is such a special place in time for me and in my life, like, to, to be a part of this thing, I don't know how you could let it go. Like, it was everything to me growing up. And that wasn't even me hoping I'd get on it. It was just like, this is the best show ever. And so I think it's so personal. I can't imagine how you could let go. Maybe just when you get super tired because it's um when you're just worn out maybe your body tells you like an athlete like i cannot do this anymore <laughs> producer lauren michaels he's one of these godly figures in entertainment so successful everything he touches what what's something about him that we may not know about him that we may be surprised to learn ooh um I mean, he's a Chiefs fan, so oh. that was, <laughs> so it wasn't just me that was like pushing to get Travis Kelsey on. His his son is a big Chiefs fan, so I think that's uh, brought Lauren around quite a bit. And he's been to Arrowhead Stadium, so that was just fun for me to learn. Like my boss and kind of an idol to me was also <laughs> has been to my my hometown stadium. Uh, he's a big fan of popcorn. You know, there's a popcorn maker right out outside his office. And it is like, I don't know if it's just because it's like Lauren specific, but it's the best popcorn I've ever had. And it, it also, it's not even like movie theater pop. It's like, there's a specific recipe that I think he's gotten dialed in over the years and it's perfect. Oh, our, my managing editor, Chris Beecham, has a question regarding you are on the NFL draft with your Kansas City buddy, Eric Stone Street. Uh, what was that moment like? That must have been fun. It was so fun. The The neatest thing for me was obviously getting to go out there and like see the crowd and see Kansas City and, you know, get to bring out Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. It was so cool. Um, but what was even better was when I went back and I watched it on TV to see how much Kansas City showed up to actually put on this event and the way that our city looked on television. I was like, just as being a kid who it wasn't that long ago where our downtown did not have much, you know, like, and I was like, this is a city where if I would have seen this on TV as a kid or an adult, I would have been like, I want to go there. That place looks awesome. And so I was just so proud, uh, proud of my, my hometown. 
Uh, I talked to Ega Wodum last week about if she has any dream hosts. And she said, Jamie Foxx, Barack Obama, Beyonce, you know, those are some big names. Do mm-hmm. you have any personal dream hosts you've been, you know, kind of itching for? Yes. Um, LeBron James, for sure. Big fan. Um, Patrick Mahomes. Um, I agree with, um, well, actually, I agree with Ego on a couple of those. I don't want to take any from her, but I do think Michelle Obama would be incredible. And and also one of those ones where the cast would just, <laughs> we'd be so in awe and <laughs> nervous the whole week. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, those those three are big ones. I feel like I have one more that I usually say, um, but it's not coming to me. I mean, we got Molly Shannon this year. That was really cool. Oh, that was yes. a good one. And I love, because the whole time I'm like, is she going to do Sally O'Malley? Please, please, please. And at the end, she brought her out with the Jonas Brothers. I know. I score. Was, yeah. And what a camel toe. It was awesome. <laughs> um, a side question. You were on Shrinking this year, which was one of my favorite new shows. Good. This Shrinking ended with kind of a cliffhanger with your character, like on a cliff. Yeah. Uh, do you think we'll see her in season two at all? I'm, I'm hoping we see her. I was so... Uh... So honored to be the the last moment. I couldn't believe it when I read the script. I'm like, I get to do this, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, just to be a part of that whole show. And you know, like when a show comes out, you're so excited for it. But it really has been in the last couple months. I feel like there was just a moment where, and it might be how Apple advertises things, where it was just a month after it came out. Where then I just started getting a lot of people being like, I love shrinking, I love shrinking, I love shrinking. And it's just continued and I'm just so happy for the whole show. Like everyone found it all at once and that's yeah. neat. Well, we're a huge Emmy website here at Gold Derby and I'm I'm very curious to know what would it mean if you were to get nominated for Saturday Night Live uh, and, and you would have to pick an episode too if you get nominated. Do you have one in mind that you would show as your best work of the season? Oh my gosh. Um, well, like it, it would be, you know, the, the coolest thing in the world just uh, growing up. Uh, um, well, not only like uh, just a fan of movies and television and pop culture and SNL, that's just an award shows. You know, it's hard to even think of myself in, in having this conversation. So I can't even really give you a good answer for that. But if I was to pick a... Uh, an episode, um, you know, getting to do that busy coworker that mm-hmm. I know is like an isolated moment, but that I feel like is me at my max. And so I think that's uh, one of my proudest moments. And then the Travis Kelsey episode was awesome. I just got to just be a part of so many fun sketches, but um, I mean, they should give him the guest host Emmy. He he was great. Oh yeah, SNL has won cool. many many guest host Emmys over the years. I'm sure. Yeah. It, it a ton more nominations. Yeah. <laughs> well, Heidi, thank you so much for chatting with us. Uh, best of luck coming up at the Emmy Awards, and have an amazing summer. Thank you, you too, Marcus. 